Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today we will discuss a paper from John Hopkins University named Deep Neural Network Embeddings for Text Independent Speaker Verification. So the topic is speaker verification which is different from speaker identification. We will learn about that and the overview of the paper is introduction to speaker verification then we will understand the network architecture in detail then we'll understand what are speaker embeddings and PLD, uh, PLDA backends and then we will see how this system is performing compared to other systems. First understand what is speaker verification. So speaker verification as I said it is different from speaker identification. So in the speaker verification we speak to a system and say is this the correct person and we uh, uh, what I mean by that is let's say we have a speaker verification system which knows who is who, who I am who I am and when I go to the system I claim this is Krishna and the speaker verification system has to verify whether the voice is uh, belongs to Krishna or not so this is very much helpful in uh, places where the security is needed for example so let's see what is the difference between speaker identification and speaker verification. So as I said, these two are different. So in speaker identification, we speak to the system and we ask the system, please guess who is the person speaking, right? For example, if I speak to a, speak to Amazon Alexa and the Alexa will try to guess who is speaking. So if I speak, it may detect my voice and it may say with 95% probability this voice belongs to Krishna but in speaker verification system I go to the system and I claim this is Krishna and the speaker verification system has to just has to uh, take a decision whether this is what this voice belongs to Krishna or not right so verification is just verifying the voice from the claimed speaker and identification is identifying the voice uh, voice which belongs to one of the speaker in the list. Now uh, in the overview of the system we will see uh, uh, we will see what are the different approaches uh, taken uh, till today for speaker verification. So if you see uh, in speech uh, in speaker verification field particularly uh, currently the best system uh, uh, currently uh, not currently uh, uh, these days the best system is considered to be as I vector based speaker identification system uh, uh, sorry it was supposed to be speaker verification so what is I vector based speaker verification so if you see if you if you, if you work in speech related uh, areas so you will hear this name I vector a lot so this is one of the breakthrough in uh, speech field where it captures uh, 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 variabilities where variabilities which are present in speech for example if you go to language you can use i vectors to detect or uh, uh, predict what are the language what is the language spoken or if you come to speaker identification you can use the same uh, speak uh, same i vector concept to identify who is the speaker so i vector is some kind of vector which has this very high discriminative discriminative property so uh, how do you how do you uh, uh, what is a vector system so we'll just go a little bit deeper into uh, understanding i vector system because later it may uh, you may uh, you may uh, see uh, i vector you may want to understand i vector in other places so in other i, I vector is built on top of uh, gm in ubm model so uh, i mean you can use the dn ubm also but uh, right now let's say we have a gm in ubm model and uh, UBM is built uh, using unsupervised data. So uh, uh, unsupervised data in the sense you take lots and lots of speech data available and you build uh, a, uh, a UBM, a universal background model. Then you use that UBM to uh, uh, to build a new GMMs for every speaker. So using something called GMM super vector. So there is a paper, very, very well known paper known as joint factor analysis for uh, uh, sp speaker identification. You can go and read about it. Uh, it's a bit complicated, a little bit uh, complicated in, in terms of maths and stuff. But uh, the concept is you build a UBM and you adopt the, your UBM to a particular speaker, which is called GMM adaptation. Then you use the GMM super vectors to build or to generate your i vectors using joint factor analysis so uh, so that is the concept of i vector 
then what are the other systems which are present in speaker verification so in speaker verification uh, again uh, this is supposed to be Im dna embedding based speaker verification not speaker identification so in speaker verification as i said you claim you are the speaker uh, you, you claim who is uh, you, you claim that i am the speaker and the system has to just accept or reject uh, you, uh, whether you are a right person or not so this is the this is actually the paper from google uh, which is like one of the uh, which is like currently the state of the art uh, speaker verification system for ok google kind of thing uh, like for example if you have a google if you are using google voice where you say uh, ok google the ok google automatically first uh, understands the word uh, ok google which is called wake word recognition as well as it identifies whether uh, this voice belongs to the particular person who is holding the phone or not so both the both the things are uh, there so there what they did was uh, in, uh, they used something called uh, long shot of memory or a recurrent neural network uh, to process uh, process ok google kind of utterances and they generated something called speaker representation those speaker representations are uh, highly discriminative feature vectors so this is some this is this was also sometimes called as d vector system because these uh, features were uh, uh, these features are dimension d and uh, if, you, if for example let's say you are enrolling to uh, google google and you are saying ok google 10 times so they take all the 10 utterances they pass it through this network they get uh, 10 different vectors uh, so those those vectors will be almost similar because it's your voice then they use all the 10 vectors they aggregate all the 10 vectors and get a new representation uh, for your voice so it's like a voice voice uh, identity a voice identity for your uh, voice and they use that during verification stage where you say okay google once more time so they will take the uh, vector generated by the network and they'll compare with whatever they had stored uh, long back from your enrollment data so they use cosine similarity to compute the uh, difference between the vectors and if it is uh, greater than some threshold they accept you as uh, you, they will accept you if you claim or they will reject you so this this system is also uh, based on embeddings so what you saw before uh, dnn embedding speaker identification and before was i, I, I vector based speaker embeddings uh, i vector uh, speaker uh, verification so this is this also belongs to this category of uh, uh, embedding based speaker verification but this is a little bit different than the paper uh, i showed before which is uh, lstm paper here they use something called time delay neural network instead of long short of memory so uh, there is a reason why they did that and uh, we will see what are the different advantages they uh, they have using time delay neural network over uh, uh, long short term memories so uh, the uh, the whole uh, network architecture is like this it has different components it has a time delay neural network uh, which operates at the frame level then uh, they have something called statistic pooling layer uh, which takes all the feature vectors or representations generated at every time step and uh, aggregates them uh, to generate one single uh, vector and they use that vectors as embeddings and uh, they use uh, the next layer level is segment level of end transformation then at the end they do speaker classification so as i said uh, this is this this is speaker verification system but you will see later why we are using doing speaker identification which is like classifying the speaker uh, you will understand why we are doing this the whole point of this paper is to do speaker verification only but to reach there they do something called speaker identification and uh, they generate the embeddings and they use those embedding for verification stage so we'll go into detail of what they did in the paper so just keep in mind that uh, they have this uh, time delay neural network and they have this statistic pooling layer and they have uh, the segment uh, uh, the again the layers which operates at the segment level which is the which sometimes called sentence level then they have a classifier class of my classification so which uh, which essentially says what is the probability of uh, this speaker uh, this speech segment belongs to this speaker out of uh, out of this uh, list so uh, we will understand each component in detail now so first we'll understand what is time delay neural network a very famous paper uh, it, it was written in uh, written back in 1980s but uh, did not get much attention at the time people are not using it much but uh, in 2015 people were able to prove 
that uh, this system is much better than any of the state of that uh, system at that time even today even today if you have very small amount of data for speech recognition let's say if you have data data like uh, 40 hours or 50 hours of data then uh, it's it's uh, this tdnn will work way better than any other uh, systems for example if you use deep speech kind of system on this small amount of data it will fail uh, miserably compared to tdnn or normal dnn uh, based uh, methods so tdnn is very well uh, very well known for this uh, this kind of i mean like a kind of st st state of the art for low resource data or yeah, but if you have large amount of data it's better to go for deep speech so let's understand what is time delay neural network so time delay neural network is similar to normal deep neural network but they have uh, uh, different characteristics when i say different characteristic if you see the architecture of uh, deep neural network or feed forward neural network what happens is if you provide an input which has uh, thousand values and all the thousand values will get converted into uh, some other some uh, uh, let's say uh, 500 values in the next layer and those 500 values will be taken and uh, generate uh, one more uh, layer of representation and so on so on so on but in speech as we know speech segments are correlated with each other for example if you have a, if you have a sentence and if you see some part of the speech so the frames are all all correlated and uh, it's better to have a system which will take care of this temporal or uh, context uh, information to predict anything so if you go for speech recognition if you want to predict a phoneme at current time step t it's better to look for uh, the features which are little bit left and right uh, which is called contexting or context windowing and it's better to use them so the, i mean if you use those things it you will get better accuracy or better predictions of the phonemes phoneme states so in this case they are doing uh, they are taking let's say they are taking frames uh, these 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 small boxes are frames so or feature vectors so frame when i say uh, it's a 20, 25 millisecond window uh, you take the mfcc of that uh, 25 millisecond window you get a vector so uh, let's say you get 40 dimension filter bank coefficients vector and those 40 dimension filter bank coefficient vector is this small box and uh, i am at time t i am i want to predict uh, let's say i want to predict some phonemes at time t so let's not consider whether we are doing speech recognition or speaker verification just understand the concept where uh, we are at a time t we want to predict something and uh, it's better to look for the previous frames and the next frames previous frames and the next frames so in the here they are taking 13 previous frames and nine future frames so why, you can ask the question why are they taking uh, 13 uh, you know, past frames and nine future frames uh, it's because uh, if, if you are doing for example if you go to speech recognition there where they want to do online speech recognition where you don't want to wait for other the future frames to come in before predicting anything so that time it's better to avoid taking the future frames into context because otherwise you will be waiting for uh, the prediction so that's why just for uh, speeding up the online decoding they are taking less future frames and more uh, previous frames or past frames so you, they have this that 13 uh, previous frames and nine future frames and if you see they do uh, something called local uh, local contexting so what is what is local context if you see dnn what happens it takes all these frames and it does the matrix vector multiplication on top of that and it gives you the next the next layer uh, representation but here they don't do that they take a small context of five five frames and they compute the next layers value using only those five then they move to next level next uh, time uh, then they again do this blue color if you see they do uh, they calculate uh, uh, the next layer uh, hidden hidden value by using these five uh, feature vectors so like that they do they move the window just like ju it's, it, this is exactly similar to convolutional neural network if you remember so what happens in convolutional neural network uh, there will be a filter that filter moves with particular number of strides if you have a 5 cross 5 filter that filter takes uh, that filter operates on this 5 patch here and then moves to the next patch then moves to the next patch and so on so on so on so here also these weights these weights whatever you're seeing the 5 weights are all tied tied together that means these are same throughout this entire sequence so so that way 
it has it gets this property of shift invariance shift invariance in the sense whether your phone name or some some feature representation present here or here doesn't matter it still gets it with the same hidden uh, same weights so that's that the property is called shift invariance and this time delay neural network has this property of shift invariance so as i said so the first layer the lower layer uh, 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 the lo local local or uh, local uh, 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 the operation op happens on the, on local patches then those will be projected into the next layer and in the next layer also uh, uh, next layer also we are going to do the operation locally right and same thing happens in the third layer and same thing happens in the fourth layer and so on so on so on but but you can think of the amount of computation needed to do this it's huge the amount of computation needed is huge if you compare the training time of normal tdnn with normal dnn the training time is 10 times more compared to tdnn uh, sorry training times of dnn is sorry tdnn is 10 times more compared to normal dnn right how do you avoid that you don't want the time to be so long the training time to be so long so this paper 2015 paper what i was saying uh, you can look for the paper time delay neural network for uh, speaker uh, sorry, uh, 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 automatic speech recognition uh, by sanjeev kudanpur and daniel pove and a few more people so uh, vijayananda pedinti or something so uh, so that paper they explain something called subsampling layers they do frame subsampling at every layer so what is some subsampling if you look at if you look at this layer let's say you look at this layer if you want to go to the next layer they are taking frame t minus 11 and t8 and they are computing the next um, uh, next layers uh, hidden weight hidden value uh, t minus 10 and here also they take this uh, t minus 5 and t minus 2 and they predict t minus 4 uh, hidden uh, of layer 3 and they are uh, neglecting all the other right and here they are taking again t minus 10 and t minus 4 to predict t minus 7 at layer 4 and uh, they take t minus uh, 1 and t minus t plus 5 of layer 3 to predict uh, t plus 2 of layer 4 right this reduces the amount of computation you needed during training so in the paper they say uh, the training speed comes down to uh, 2x compared to dnn which is huge right and the number of parameters you want to store is also very very less because you are pruning lot of the lot of the necessary connections right so so this is uh, uh, time delay neural network right uh, so uh, so in the uh, and one more important thing is if you see it, the bottom layers bottom layers the the context is very small uh, it's like phi uh, and so on but as you go to higher higher level the number of uh, uh, the context window actually increases if you see this one um, the context window is huge compared to uh, this one and this num layers context window is huge compared to this layer and this is huge again this way so like that so as you go on the hierarchy upward layers the the context they will increase then uh, they, they increase the context but at the lower level uh, these filters operates on very small small uh, uh, patches to get the local context of the uh, speech fragment so again, what is uh, again I said, uh, TDNN was invented in back in 1980s by Jeffrey Hinton and Alex Fabel and uh, top. These are these are the, like very well known people right now. And uh, as I said, TDNN captures long-term temporal correlation between speech frames, and uh, it has this property of shift invariance in like CNN, and subsampling increases the time, and they are actually faster compared to LSTM also. LSTM is very very slow compared to TDNN and um, they capture this learn this local correlation between speech frames then the second part of uh, this paper the second part of the, this picture if you see the second part that that first part is tdn and the second part is statistic pooling layer let's understand what is statistics pooling layer so as i said here if you look at this picture i am taking uh, t minus 13 t minus 5 frames which are like almost 20 uh, 22 frames right i'm taking only 22 frames and in my speech my speech can have maybe 100 frames if i have a one second audio or uh, it will be like 1000 frames if i have 10 second audio right so what will what we will do with the others others so this is like just like uh, dnn we have to move the time step and we have to again take this 22 frames feed it to the network and see what is the prediction 
next move to the next step take the prediction so on so on so on so so what we will do is uh, tdnn actually operates on short short segments uh, short short segment in the sense it's like fr it's frame level right so uh, may, you may have 20 frames and feeding it to dr tdnn but what we want is uh, at the end end of uh, at the end of uh, all this paper what we want is we want to get a representation for the whole utterance whole utterance so the whole utterance may have thousand frames but how will we get only one vector one representation uh, or one feature vector for the entire thousand frames so what we will do is as we saw the first day tdnn was processing 22 frames then we will move the time we get one more 22 frames so on so on so on we will have this tdnn thousand times right but if you do that the higher level here if we, if we are extracting feature from layer 4 we will get thousand different vectors right so at these thousand different vector we have to somehow convert it into a single vector so for that we use this statistics polling layer where we take all these thousand vectors and we calculate the mean vector and standard deviation vector out of for uh, out of that uh, th the thousand different vectors so then we concatenate them and feed it to the next layer which will do one, one more up, uh, affine transformation then that output goes to one more affine transformation and at the end we pass that to the final softmax layer so this is the job of doing statistics polling layer so it takes all the vectors predict all the representations at every time steps and we, it calculates the mean and standard deviation of that uh, and of the entire uh, uh, sequence of feature vectors you can ask one question why is it why you do why are we doing statistics why can't we just average all of them i mean there are reasons uh, i mean there are different ways of doing polling uh, for example in, in if you go to image domain they do max polling if you go to and they do something called average polling there are different kinds of polling but uh, this one makes sense in speech and the configuration as i said so uh, i said that the bottom the local the local context is uh, uh, t minus 2 to t plus 2 uh, f uh, t plus 2 uh, frames for example look at this picture here i am taking 1 2 3 4 5 right five different feature vectors the context window is 5 then at f at layer 2 layer 2 we are taking uh, the total context they are saying is nine, but what is what happens is we are going to take only three. Uh, actually, this yeah, the total context is five, but we are going to consider only. Actually, it is supposed to be there is supposed to be one more red line. So this t minus two t and t plus two. This is location. If you see this box right, the uh, the square brackets. That means we are taking all the frames from t minus two to t plus two. But if you see, see this curly braces, then that says we are taking only t minus two frame, tth frame, and t plus two frame. That means only three uh, three. Uh, uh, feature uh, feature vectors and but the co total context is nine because even though we are doing the subsampling the total context is nine and if you see uh, the input dimension at layer one is 120 cross 512 so 512 is just a hidden uh, layer size but what is 120 120 comes from the number of features so for example uh, if you if you think of uh, uh, if you see uh, uh, so 120 is uh, uh, if i remember properly it's uh, 30 so i don't exactly remember what was the input uh, feature size i think it is uh, i'm not sure uh, if it is exactly 40 so i will like to look at the paper the input uh, size is 120 and uh, here the output output of that first layer is 512 which is the hidden layer size then we are taking three frames out of that 512 which is like 512 into three times we get 1536 that is go that will go as input to the layer 2 and the layer 2 output is again 512 then we again take three frames which is t minus 3 t and 3 plus 3 and that is again the 1536 uh, 512 512 is the output of the layer 3 then uh, output of layer 3 uh, layer 4 and 5 does not have this uh, does not have any uh, any more subsampling so they are just uh, taking that uh, at that time they are taking one on frames output which is 512 into 512 and if you see the layer fifth layer 5 uh, uh, output is 1500 so the 1500 
uh, is the feature dimension which goes to subsampling layer or uh, sorry uh, statistic pooling layer so you have three t uh, capital t number of frames so you will you will take all the frames and compute the uh, which uh, for example if you have capital t frames which is like 1000 you get 1000 1500 dimension vectors and those will get those then you will calculate uh, mean and standard deviation of those vectors you will get to two vectors which are of dimension 1500 again you concatenate them and feed it to the next layer which takes 3000 uh, 1500 plus 1500 which is 3000 and then so layer 6 or uh, layer 6 uh, segment output is uh, sorry layer 6 hidden representation output is 512 uh, Fidel dimension then again you do one more offhand transformation then at the end you take this output from layer 7 and feed it to the uh, classifier which is software classifier which will have n number of speaker n can be anything uh, which can be 3000 speaker or 4000 speaker depending on the amount of data you have right so this is the network configuration then how do you do the training so the, in the for the training uh, as i said this network uh, uh, training was done uh, using switchboard corpus and combination of switchboard and sre so there uh, they say uh, number of speakers were 4733 and they remove all the speakers sorry space speech segments which are less than 10 second long and if any speaker has less than four utterances then they remove it and uh, to train the system they use this is just like classification they use multi-class class cross entropy as the objective function then they uh, minimize it using std optimizer uh, so if you see the equation so what is happening is you the output of the network will give you the probability of the speaker k uh, uh, if you look at the kth unit the probability of the speaker given the entire utterance then you take log of that and uh, if dnk dnk is just one if the speaker uh, k is, uh, k uh, the p segment is belongs to speaker number k and you may you have a k speaker and you have n utterances so you sum over all of them and you take negative of the log and you minimize this uh, cost function this is just like uh, law uh, categorical cross entropy loss now uh, you must have understood what we did here we just did so if you look at this picture what we did is we did speaker identification we did not a speaker verification because we are doing classification of speech segments as i said before if you do in identification we s we feed the speech and we ask the system to predict predict the sp for whom this speech belongs to but in verification we provide the speech as well as we'll say the system okay this is me you just have to verify whether it's me or not right so what we just explained the network architecture was speaker very speaker identification not exactly speaker verification now we can ask the question then where are we doing speaker verification so we will do speaker verification now so so for the speaker verification what we do is let's say you have to uh, in speaker verification there are three different stages development stage where we already developed the system and uh, enrollment phase and testing phase or evaluation phase so enrollment phase is where you take some few utterances of a person for example let's say i want to build a system which will verify when I, whenever i go to the system and speak which will and claim i am the speaker it should verify whether it's krishna or not what i do i collect let's say 10 utterances of my me then i feed it to the system we just built right then we extract the high level features which you saw here so the features which we extract is the embedding a and b right so you can take b a or b so b will have more uh, uh, like uh, uh, it will have more transformed version of a because there is one more affine transformation uh, so there is a little bit non-linearity to that vector but you can take one of those two embedding if i if i have 10 utterances of me i feed all the 10 i get 10 different vectors of uh, uh, vectors for my voice and i aggregate all of them and i get a one vector which is like voice print of my voice right then during that is that is called enrollment phase so you uh, you call any person whom you want to build the speaker verification you take little bit speech of them and then you extract these embeddings for that enrollment data right then we use something called pdl pldA backend the probabilistic linear discriminant analysis backend where during testing phase during testing phase we verify whether this person is actually the person who is claiming how do you do that let's say i i enroll to the system i have a vector for me 
now during verification stage i come to the system and speak the system takes the speech utterance and again calculates the embedding vector this embedding vector and the embedding vector which was computed during enrollment enrollment phase should match right and if they match then the system with some threshold the system should verify this is krishna so why are they doing pldi back end i mean we just have to calculate we just have to build a system which will system which will uh, discriminate this uh, discriminate these feature vectors right how, how how can you discriminate this feature vector i mean why didn't we use the actual msc feature vector but we are using this feature because th this feature which we have extracted has this property of speaker discrimination because the system was trained to identify speaker this feature silvel features will have very high speaker discrimination uh, property so this speaker discrimination property is what helps us in getting the speaker enrollment or getting the speaker verification system to work with very less amount of data so this pdla back pldi backend helps us in doing this uh, verification so finally we will come to the performance of the system they they in the paper if you see the paper they have done they have done lots and lots of experiment uh, they have done it on sre 10 data sre 10 uh, data and stuff but uh, just for the comparison of i vector system i am going to show only uh, one small figure if you want to if you want to see the different experiments they have done just please go and read the paper so in this paper they in the paper they calculate something called the equal error rate and uh, lower the better Uh, i vector gets uh, uh, seven uh, for example cantonese data they get uh, 8.3 and if you use embedding at layer a you get 7.7 embedding at layer b and if you fuse them you get 6.5 so so uh, as you can see uh, speaker verification system built by this kind of uh, tdna or dnn based speaker uh, embedding based speaker verification system are better compared to i vector systems and uh, you can see the dt curve also uh, which shows again uh, better uh, results compared to i vectors so there is one more paper called d vector system uh, which was released by google and uh, they say it's uh, they have much better results than the, these two but we can't uh, in the experiments were done on okay google the kind of data which is not accessible publicly for anyone else to conduct their experiment show their system that it works these algorithms work better than them i mean it's not possible because you don't have that kind of data and uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, i mean who knows that d vector system might be better than uh, this x vector this is called x vector system uh, there is one more paper after this uh, which is, which was again written by david schneider only david schneider and uh, general povey and his team so uh, uh, overall uh, you can uh, overall what you can see is this deep learning and deep learning methods uh, like uh, embedding based methods they actually work very well if you have very good amount of data so and uh, if you see uh, there are other works also uh, like cms network based uh, speaker verification system where they build a cms network which will Uh, generate uh, similar uh, which was built using similarity kind of metric it's sometimes called metric learning so those are also there uh, later we will cover that also and uh, uh, thank you so much for watching the video if you are not subscribed to the uh, channel please subscribe uh, if you like the video thank you